Hey, what's going on, family? It's your man, Avery Yasharad in the studio, man. We got a banger, as always, man. Today, this video was sent to me uh, shot, uh, about being broke, and this lady was saying that she was broke. And, and so I don't know if she was being facetious or she just was literally, hey, I'm just out of bread. But I'm reacting to this uh, video, and uh, I thought it was funny. I thought it was hilarious. So um, shout out to the content creator, her name and link would be in the bio of this, uh, in the description of this video. So, uh, cause it's our content, man. I like to give, uh, credit to the content creator. So, uh, let's get to it, man. I'm, uh, I'm gonna let y'all hear what she's, she's saying. So, uh, let's get to it. I'm broke. I'm broke. I'm broke. I'm broke. I'm broke. I'm broke. Yeah, I'm broke. And guess what? And I want the fucking world to know. Yeah, I'm broke. Because why would I be sitting up here pretending like I have some shit I don't have? Huh? Why do y'all do that to yourselves? I'm broke. Bitch, I am the brokest motherfucker on this motherfucking earth right now. I hate these rent prices. First of all, y'all's kids done broke into my car about 50 fucking times. My insurance done dropped my... Day. I'm broke. And I'm okay saying I'm broke. You guys should try it sometime. Look at yourself in the mirror or in your phone and say hi i'm broke yeah and i don't feel no type of way about that shit because we all are why people like to pretend i don't know but honestly the world is broke like majority of y'all are broke so y'all sit up here and love to pretend like y'all are not nope we all are we're all hey i'm gonna stop it right there man but Yes, I like what she was saying. She was like, hey, man, I'm broke, man. But you know what? The world is broke. FEMA broke. The government broke. Cats out here in the street broke. Everybody broke, man. Nobody really got no real money anymore. Besides, a lot of people do pretend that they have this and have that. Now, because I was talking to a guy a couple of months back, probably last year sometime, youngster, man, youngster. He was very impressionable. And he was saying, man, he was working at a warehouse and he was working like 60, 70 hours a week overtime and everything. And he said, man, I'm going to buy me a hell cap. All my boys got one. I got to give me a hell cap, man. And I'm like, okay, that's a hundred. The Dodge is charging a hundred thousand, 80 to a hundred thousand dollars for these cars, depending on the uh, trim level that you get. And I'm like, okay, you're going to put about 10,000. I, well, I asked him how much he's going to put down. And uh, he was hesitant, but then he was saying about tw about ten to twelve thousand dollars down, and I'm like, bro, you gonna put ten to twelve thousand dollars down on a depreciating uh, asset? You know what I mean? But that comes in not being um, influenced by the world and start trying to educate yourself about money. So he was like, yeah, man, I already did the research on it. I'm gonna get this Hellcat. I think he wanted the Demon or the Red. One of it was it was one of the high ones. He said like it was gonna be like at the finance man. It's gonna be like a hundred and one thousand and something like that. Blue, blue, blue. I said okay, bro. That's a lot of money for a car. Um, he was like, so what you drive? I said I drive an old truck. I, I'm not trying to impress none of you ninjas out here. I drive an old truck, brother, and it get me from point A to point B if I need to. Go out of town. Now I have something nice to ride in. Don't get it twisted. But I'm at a stage in my life where I can afford the maintenance. And I can, because see, what people don't realize, you might can afford that car payment, but it'd be that maintenance. When you take that thing into the shop and they're telling you it's going to cost you about $1,000 per tire, like one of my vehicles, <laughs> $1,000 per tire. And you're like, oh, um, or your oil change going you by six hundred dollars or a thousand dollars. See, people don't understand the maintenance on these cars. You think you can get this car and just pay the payment, but then the tires, the maintenance, the insurance. And so I just so I got a guy in the car dealership business. So good, good. Well, I call him associate. And I was just asking him, I said, hey, man, what's the average price on these cars? And with finances, if you put about ten to a thousand dollars down, because I want to call, I called him in front of front of this young man. And he was saying ten thousand dollars down on this car with solid credit. 
you go you're looking at about fifteen to eighteen hundred dollars a month. Fifteen to eighteen hundred dollars a month, man. And that's financing this thing, I think seventy two or eighty four months or something like that. And I'm like, bro, with fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred dollars a month, ten thousand dollars down. If you take that ten thousand dollars and go get your house, fix her up, or, or just a house. You could put about $3,000 down, $200,000 house. I know people like, man, what $200,000 house is a shack? Maybe. But, okay, you got $10,000 down, FHA loan, you put 3% down in a solid neighborhood with a good school district. If you can afford a $100,000 car, you can afford a $300,000 house. Um 3% down on that going to cost you about $9,000 on a $300,000 house in a solid school district. The equity going to go up over time. Now you could, you know, flip that, get your money out of it and go from there. Not being caught up in this rat race of society or having a $1,800 car payment. They're going to break down. They're going to have to go to the shop. You know what I mean? Or you go in there, you, 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 you buy this house in a college area and rent it out to the students. You know what I mean? If you don't want to live there, you go in there, you buy it, rent it out to, to students, man. Four or five students, you have the three or four, five bedroom, three to five bedroom, rent per room out to the students. You know what I mean? So it's ways to try to learn money. And, and listen, I'm not telling y'all nothing because I, I'm telling y'all something that I had to learn over time because I didn't have nobody to teach me about money. So I had to get it out the mud and learn from my heartaches and mistakes and doing dumb stuff over the years. You know what I mean? So I got tired of being broke. You know what I mean? And having a few dollars in the bank. You know what I mean? I ain't, ain't got much. So, like, and about listening, I ain't got, you know, I ain't got much. I'm probably on my last, probably on my last $500. That's it. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> but I'm telling y'all, man, uh, the world is broke. Everything's inflated. Food is high. Uh, daycare is ridiculous, man. I, I feel bad for the young parents right now. Any young parents or anybody who's having kids, Oh, uh, man, I heard one lady say she's paying like $1,600 a month in daycare. I'm like, my goodness. I remember when my kids was in daycare, I think it was like a hundred and some dollars. But that was a long time ago. My kids are grown now. And and so I understand things go up over time. But, yes, everything that went up except the um, except your, your paycheck, except your salaries. You know what I mean? You know, I'm seeing people... Robbing Peter to pay Paul at this time. I'm seeing these payday loans is coming back. I'm seeing um, these these digital money where people can fill out things and get caught in these these new uh, new scams. You know, everybody trying to get extra money. Everybody trying to survive. But I tell y'all, the quickest way this just experience that I seen that work. The quickest way to build wealth or to get yourself out of a rut is you're going to have to come together with like-minded people in, in a tribal situation. I know everybody wants their own house. I understand that. Everybody wants their own space. Everybody, you don't want to have to share nothing. But if you truly have financial problems, you know what I mean? I, I'm not saying this lady is here. I don't know her like that. She's just a content creator that her video was sent to me. But if you're truly having financial problems in here, in life, you're going to have to come together with, with roommates or with family members. Everybody want to do it on their own, man. Even my even my babies, even my kids say, hey, dad, I, I just want an apartment by myself. And I'm looking at these apartments is $1,700 to $2,000 for one bedroom. You know what I mean? Especially the way I'm living at. And, and, and it's like, and they can go higher. And I'm like, I know what you make. You know what I mean? Stay home, get your money together. When you leave here, go ahead and get your house. So now you build an equity in a good school district. Now, nobody, I, I bought a house in the wrong area and had to lost money on it. So I try to tell my kids to learn from my mistakes. So get your house in a good school district, solid house, 
And then you got equity in five years. You can sell it. You put your equity out. You go buy you something else, buy your car and another house. You know what I mean? Don't go out here and get this apartment. They're going to cost you $1,700 to $2,000 a month, especially by yourself. Make sure you got a roommate or somebody who can help you um, so you can stack some cheese, man, and get, and get it out the mud. You know what I mean? Ain't nothing worse than having a place over your head and you can't afford it and you're stressing. And then something happened like a car breakdown or, or accident or just, just something to set you back financially. So people, I want people to, to uh, really trying to be responsible with their finances as much as possible. But the quickest way to come out of this thing is do like the Asians, do like the uh, Hispanics do. Man, I, I look at study, I study other uh, nationalities. And they're they roommate, they're they by one house and, and 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 several people live in there. You know what I mean? And the next thing you know, in a year, they own three houses. All of them got brand new Chevys or fours or whatever. So it could happen, but we have been taught, especially my people, that we can't get along and and and, and why you gotta be the leader and well, somebody always gotta be the leader. That's how order is restored by having an elder or a matriarch or a patriarch or leader in each situation, man. Like I heard one group was saying, I was talking, I went to dinner um, with, with a family member and he was saying that a couple of guys get together every week and they put $50 in this account. And over time, they're able to go buy houses, cash, money. Because if fifty dollars, you got twenty guys. You know what I mean? That's a thousand dollars a week. It's fifty-two thousand dollars a year. A couple of years go by, interest compound on that man. You got plenty of money to go buy a house, cash, or apartment, apartment building, or whatever y'all want to do together. So it's it can be done, but we have to come together as a as a collective group and get it done. So with that said, man, you don't have to be broke. You can dig it. You can get it out the mud. You can. Um, be financially successful without being a rapper, without being an entertainer, without selling your body, without doing OnlyFans, without doing all this degrading mess. You can be successful. It takes patience, um, but it can happen. And with that said, man, I'm A.B. Rashore, man. Y'all take it easy. And until next time, shalom.